the next church oh let me go back let me go back to um let, let me go back to um church at Pergamum. Um, one of the things about the church at Pergamum, is that they were told to repent, but one of the things that happened uh, during that time, it, even though they were told to repent, uh, they were also given the responsibility uh, to remain faithful. They were faithful. Uh, uh, re remains true to Christ, does not renounce their faith. They didn't renounce their faith. They just got mixed up and start uh, following the things of the Nicolaitans and, 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 and the things of Baal. And that period of history was, as I stated before, called the, uh, the lasciviousness age. And now as we go to the church at Fire Tower, um, this church was told to repent Hold on to what you have. You see, uh, Jezebel, they, they were rebuked. And the rebuke was they, they tolerate Jezebel with uh, their immortal and idolatry. And this is the period uh, that we call uh, the Dark Ages. And during this period from 606 to 1520 is what happened in that situation. Excuse me. And, and as I say, you can stop me as we go, because I want you to be able to articulate this uh, in the future. Um, the next church is Sardis. Uh, Sardis was dead. That was the rebuke. It says, holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. Uh, the deeds, reputation of being alive. They look like they were alive. But he said they, the rebuke was dead. Wake up. Strengthen what remains. Remember what you receive. Obey it. Repent. And when you do, we'll be dressed in white. We'll be acknowledged before my father and his angels. You see, every church had something about Christ, commendation, rebuke, exhortation, and promise. That's so important to understand these seven churches. Because when you read it, it becomes much clearer to you uh, when you see these uh, things in uh, these chapters. The next church is uh, Sardis. And Sardis is from 1520 to 1750 AD. And that's one of my favorite periods of history uh, which is called the Reformation period. Uh, the, the, the Reformation period and the Great Preaching period are very important in the history of, of our civilization. So Sardis was written, uh, I mean, the, Sardis represents the time of the, 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 the writing about uh, 1520 and 1750 AD. And as you can see, uh, Sardis holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, but the rebuke was they were dead and told them to wake up. Uh, that's, that's, that's the Reformation period. The next period uh, is called um, the Philip the Philadelphia church, that church did not have any rebuke. Uh, so that, that's important because uh, as you see this period, this was the period of the great revival. That's when preaching was going on and great preaching took place. Um, that's when John Wesley and, and Charles Wesley and uh, Reverend Finley and uh, Reverend um, Holiday and some of those preachers um, were preaching and people were getting saved. Um, and it was saying that, hold on to what you have. I will keep you from the hour, hour of trial coming on the whole world, okay? Um, and during this period 
1520 to 1750, that's the Protestant Reformation. That's when the church was forming uh, into what it is. Sometimes what happens uh, in your studies, you'll get confused because you're not looking at what John is really seeing. Uh, John writes what he sees, and when he writes it, later on it explains it. He doesn't explain it, but the person who gives him what he's uh, writing explains it. So in essence, the spirit gave John everything he wrote. He did not try to interpret anything. What he, what he saw is what he wrote, okay? And the spirit told him what to write. Now, the last church the last church is the church at Laodicea. 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 This church didn't get any commendation because they were lukewarm, neither hot, nor cold, wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. And, and, and it says that this church represents 1900 to present day today. In other words, this is in our lifetime, okay? Now, now I want you to, to observe how John writes what he saw in chapters 1, 2, and 3, represents the seven churches of Asia Minor, that gives for the reader the understanding of how the church was in the past, the present, and the future before the rapture. Chapters 1 through 3 is dealing with the church prior to the rapture. So when we get to studying the rapture, you'll see why the seven churches of Asia Minor are so important, and you can go back to your chart and see the period of history that these seven churches represent. Because after the, after the rapture, comes in chapters four, I mean, after the rapture, in chapter six uh, and on, it's going to be dealing with something that is called the Great Tribulation. And some people confuse the Great Tribulation with this period of history, and that would be erroneous to do that. Now, let me back up and be quiet for a minute to see what you, what you want to share their thoughts. Okay, Pastor Stroud, this is Dinah. Yes, ma'am. Okay, in the church of Laodicea, where it's talking yeah. about um, from 1900 to the present, and it's talking about the rebuke being lukewarm. So we are considered in that group. Is that right? Yes, like present day. Yes, ma'am. So, so our rebuke is that we are lukewarm. Correct. Okay. We're neither hot nor cold. Uh, okay. And, and that period now, that doesn't mean everybody's like that. Right, right. But that's right. what it gives uh, reference to. Okay. Mm-hmm. But all the churches receive the promise. That's what we always have to remember. Okay. One of the, uh, Pastor, this, this is Bessie. One of the things that and I'm a little confused about is that I guess I was thinking that all of the churches, in a way, represent today, the churches of today, that we, that, you know, even though they were in periods, that we have representation in all of those areas today that correct. we should be concerned about. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. That's correct. 
Uh, however, <coughs> when you deal with history, um, you, you got to go with what's dominant in the history. And doing those uh, particular points that all of these things were, it, were, were in each part of history, but something was more dominant in, in those areas of history that's being taught in um, world history. Also, I put, I put some notes. Hmm. Something wrong with my microphone. Um, okay. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Okay. Um, I placed some footnotes, and hopefully that will help you in some of the studies. So, so if you have the, the actual um, you should have the power and you can go back and look at it at your mm -hmm. but ho hopefully that these little notes will help you as well. These notes are helpful, and we have the PowerPoint. I guess the thing I'm trying to get to in my mind is I won't remember what happened with the Church of Ephesus, per se, or any of the other seven. But I'm trying to glean, you know, in summary, what am I taking away from this? And how does that relate to me in my life uh, and understanding? And I guess what I'm taking away is that you know, the vision was there and he was able to write the letters to warn us of the things that we should be doing or not doing, per se, uh, in changing our life today uh, so that we can receive, you know, his blessing and, and so forth. That's a good point, Just, and you do not I'm sorry? The way you are approaching the study of Revelation in the first three chapters is not received that way. You have to well, that's what I'm trying to make clear to myself. Right, right. That's what I'm trying to help you to, to see. It has to be uh, structurally clear. Because if you're trying to apply it today, it's not always prevalent uh, in the first three chapters. I see. The first three chapters, it's doing something else. It's showing you what the early church did. Then it's telling you what the church did in the present and what the church will be in the future. That's why I try to put a perspective on each church that it was represented. Okay. So let's, let's talk some more so I can clear up. To me, the Revelation is probably one of the most difficult books, <laughs> only because of uh, its division into so many uh, different aspects to me. And I'm trying, I always try to, to you know, to understand what I should take away from each each one so that I can apply it. Right. And that's why I was asking the question. Right. And, and application is not always is not always uh, mandatory to study Revelation. Okay. What's mandatory is being true to what John saw. Mm -hmm. Which means that once you learn how it is structured, then you will be able to understand the flow of the And that's why Revelation said, this is the book that you will receive the blessing, 
because you will have understood the process of the spirit moving during the time. I see. So it's 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 more processed to some point where we are now rather than application. Correct. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's so okay. true. And that's why I said you know you know not use revelation, the study of revelation as emotional type of study. It's basically a technical study, a study of what John saw. And John spoke symbolically, but it's always explained in the text. Mm -hmm. Okay. That clears up a lot of things. <laughs> good, good, good. Um, I, I didn't have this problem with my mic this morning, this afternoon. Yeah, you, you're having some trouble now where you're cutting in and out a little bit. That's what I said. I can hear it. I can see. Um, now you, you've cut out, period. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Yes. Now. Uh huh. Is that Sister Carolyn? Whose number is Yeah. Now, and you, so that's one way you can remember the churches. You know, you know, Smyrna and Philadelphia didn't get a return. Right. Okay. And what was the other church that you were doing? What was the other church that did what now? You, you cut out. Hello? I can now. You cut out when you asked the question, so I didn't hear. Okay, what what church is in the congregation? Uh, Laodicea. Yeah. Yeah, Laodicea. So, yeah. so you already have the three churches with the chart in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah, that's okay. better. All right. I don't know. I don't know. I've got to get these mics fixed. Um, let me see. Um, what church was in the dark? Age? What church was in the Dark ages. Church represented the dark ages. Uh, the middle, the middle ages. Yeah. All right. All right. That here. Yeah. Uh, what church represented the modern? Samaria. Samaria. 
learn the Bible. Yeah. Correct. What, what church is this today? Uh, Little City. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Um, what church? Uh, the uh, represented what you cut out? The first century. Oh, uh, Ephesus. That's right. So you see, you got them all. You got all. Okay. <laughs> right. now, 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 let me go to the structure, and, and this may help you. Chapter 1, chapters 1 through 3, represents essentially foreshadowing of future histories. So, anything we studied in chapters 1 through 3 was the first century foreshadowing of future history. What happened here is that that John got this a vision from, from heaven. Uh, the spirit told him to write. Yeah. He wrote these seven churches, probably because he was familiar with them and was able to give what he saw. And when you write it down, you now we can look back and see the very history unfolding in chapters one through three. Now, when you get to chapter four through six, you're going to see that the church is being raptured, which means taken up. So from chapter one through three, represents the time before the mm -hmm. So nothing in chapters 1 through 3 is going to happen in chapter 4 through 6. Am I clear? Yeah. <coughs> now, now okay. once you know that structure, and you know that, then you know the seven churches represented everything that took place before the rapture. Which means that we who are Christians believe that the rapture has not taken place because we are still here. Yeah. Me too. All right. Mm -hmm. Some people get confused about that. And that's what I'm trying to help us to see. That once you learn how it's structured, you won't get confused about what happened in the book of Revelation. Chapter 6 through 19 represents the great tribulation, or the seven years of tribulation, which is one in the two. The first three and a half years of tribulation will be bad, because those who do not go up to the rapture will be left on the earth and we'll have three and a half years of tribulation. And it's going to be rough. But then there's, then there's going to be another three and a half years of tribulation. And that's going to be even rough. So those who get caught up in the rapture will have an opportunity in the great tribulation. So nobody will be left here in the great tribulation. And during that time, the battle of Armageddon will take place in the 19th chapter. For those who believe that the rapture has taken place, when do they think it took place? Well, those who believe that the rapture has taken place uh, would be those who think that those who have gone on I see. are in the rapture. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, there's some people who believe that now. And, they, and some believe that this is the great tribulation. All right. Chapters 20 through 22 will be the thousand years and judgment. 
And in chapter 20, the Antichrist and the beast are cast into the lake of fire, and Satan is down in the bottomless pit. That's, that's the basic structure of the book of Revelation. And if you know it, you're going to be able to get through all of the symbolism that take place. So next week, uh, we're going to study the rest. And I will have a, I will have a, a power for that as well. Any questions? Okay, Pastor. So when John goes to write this down, it's like if somebody told you, go into a room and write down everything you see. Like even if it was something we've never seen before. We're just supposed to write it down. We can try to figure it out, interpret it. We're just supposed to write it down. So that's what John would do. Is that correct? Can you hear me? Uh, I hear you. My, 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 it's chopping. Okay, okay. Testing one, two, three. Testing. We hear you now. Okay. I'm so sorry if I could put in the chat. Now you could now. Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to work on my mic uh, because it's chopping up, and I'm using an external mic. Let me see if I go to my computer computer mic. See what happens. Is your computer lid open? You're going to type it. I try to type it. Oh, I, I don't type this. <laughs> I got a chat here. What does it say? Oh, it's charged to see the chat, won't you? Can you hear me? Okay, I see. Yes, I can. Uh huh. Oh boy. So, uh, Mr. Donna, type in something. Yes, yes. she said. Let's do everyone. Yes. So John was told to just write, not interpret. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. He he, he just wrote what he saw. Did he, he, so he wrote everything he saw. Yeah. And, and what he saw, in other words, what you have here or what the churches were doing or involved in, but they were, they were rebuked. In other words, uh, there was no, there was no good that was different from what uh, the ones that were rebuked were doing. Correct. Okay. That chart represents everything that was written. Everything, okay. Everything that was written, and I and I categorized it because it was in each one of the presentations. Mm -hmm. I think that's very important in understanding how mm -hmm. yeah. uh, our yeah. world is. Because once we get on in the parts of the world, there's going to be a lot of symbolism 
and that symbolism will be explained uh, somewhere in a particular chapter mm -hmm. because of what he saw. Yeah, I see. Mm -hmm. The chart answers my question, actually. I just think Revelations to me is the most difficult book. And the reason um, why you find it so difficult because you want to utilize a study skill that is not um, conducive for the study of Revelation. Yeah, I see. That, that's what makes it so difficult. But when you recognize that it is the only book that you read that says you get blessed, meaning that book reveals God. Mm -hmm. and that's what it's about. So in order for God to be revealed, um, you have to understand what God is revealing as he tells John to write. That's why God told John to write it, so it will be revealing. And it comes at the end because it is a prophecy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do you do you have any more questions? Anything you know particular you're comfortable with? No, you answered the most important question to me, which was application versus uh, process. Right. And uh, Mr. Hesse, uh, one of the things that I have discussed in a past Bible study is going to be much different. Uh, than a devotion. Uh, uh, what I try to do is to give you two to study. Mm -hmm. A devotion of Bible study wants to give you an uh, application on how uh, yeah. this particular scripture for your life. No, I want this kind of Bible study I, rather than devo the uh, emotional or uh, devotional. But uh, I just have a tendency to want to apply as well as to to understand process. I I like to look at tools, but I also like to look at the application of tools. That's just me. And I think I think that was the difficulty so, for me. So Either teaching on revelation, or preaching on revelation, I always have this structure of book of revelation in my in my thing. And when I know what chapter they're in, I know what frame of reference to deal with as they deal with that particular chapter. Most people don't talk about structure though. That's the one thing with it. So I guess it's been difficult to understand. Let's look at uh, the next few weeks. The next few weeks, this is what we're going to be doing. Chapter 4 through 6, the rapture. Chapter 6 through 19, the great tribulation. Uh, and chapter 20 through 22. So we should be finished with the book of Revelation at the end and the beginning. Of the well, probably about the first, the first part of 6. Okay. Okay, I know you're outside, but I'm going to keep you. We're just, we're just, just uh, trying to absorb. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah.
Gary Gentry's uh, funeral yesterday, and I thank you all for your prayers. That's the first time that I've been in a setting since March, uh, and uh, I was I was saved. Uh, I used my mask and I preached in my mask, uh, but I, it's very difficult to preach in the mask. Yeah, right. you need to get a shield too. That's good. Did they limit the people that should come? How many people? Yeah, they limited people. They yeah. get in with the uh, visitation, visit, but they had to uh, be distant six feet apart. Yeah. From 11 to 12 30 of visitation. And, the, and then the funeral was private. Yeah. And, and it was six feet away. Yeah. I remember him. I just, uh, I, I hadn't been going to any. Thing. That's good. That's good. Stay safe. Yeah, I go to the grocery store. Yeah. My great outing is going to the grocery store. I heard him. He wanted somebody to share your day. Oh. How are you all doing? Because you're in a, you're in a, you're in a unique, unique situation, too. Are you all, I'm sure you're putting together, uh, you know, the social distancing. Is, is that difficult? It's very difficult. I have two trays like that. Some of the clients are trays oh. so that they can more distance. Uh, most of the clients are not allowed to have property unless they have a job. So everybody has to work. So not distance. Yeah. I would imagine it's hard to people are so used to being social. It's difficult sometimes for them to want a social distance. It is. Right. Uh, prayer request. Pray for us all. We need. <laughs> I ask you to remember our niece, Renee. Uh, she has been, uh, uh, she has contact, she has made, uh, she has contracted COVID 19. She works in a uh, assisted living place. So uh, she's under quarantine right now, but she needs our prayer. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you say that was your niece? Yeah. Okay. My wife's uh, sister who's deceased, my daughter. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Francisco, I think, was having eye surgery today. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay. So, okay. Thursday. Today's Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. Oh. All right. We'll, we'll put it on the list. Mm-hmm. All right, let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this day and all of your blessings. We pray, God, for the thanks for work to your glory. We pray, Father, to help all of us to grow stronger. And we pray for our sick and our shut in. He will Reverend Fraser if he has surgery tomorrow. And we pray for uh, Sheila Renee, uh, who contracted COVID 19. 
we ask your covering up on her and your spread. We thank you for uh, Sister Bessie Jackson and Sister Dinah Johnson who joined us in Bible study tonight. And we pray that as we study Revelation, we will grow to your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 God Amen. bless you all. Y'all be safe. God bless you. Y'all you be, be safe. safe also. All right. Thank you. All, and everybody, Sister Diana, you and whoever that was on the phone. Oh, All right. Just, thank you. Yeah, they, they're gone. They should be safe. Yeah. I'm, I'm ending the call. Okay. Right. Leaving too then. Have a blessed week. You too now. Bye-bye.